from Islam and I'm not a terrorist. For the only guns I've ever fired are the ones with the bullets called poetry and the only mindfuls I've created are the ones that explored with kindness and compassion. Instead of dropping bombs, I drop mics. But I'm still sorry for the, for the bombing and the massacre, the attacks and the bloodshed. I'm sorry for the, for the suffering. But don't you know I'm hurting too? It hurts that I have to stand here and defend myself and I too am a victim. But I'm still sorry. Terrorism is terrorism, no matter who is behind the trigger. Speak a good word or remain silent. This is a beautiful advice by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, regarding using the tongue wisely and showing kindness to neighbors and guests. Say good words, that's productive. Do you know every word you utter is an investment? opportunity you either allow that investment to succeed or to flop so you can choose your words in order to better the returns in linguistics a word is the smallest element that can be uttered in isolation with objective or practical meaning no matter who we are no matter where we live or what we do in our daily lives. We all depend on the proper use of words. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Brother, I am born in Oman. I know that she that is discouraging vita, violence, terrorism, extremism, and radicalization. Ati. And you know, it's a mission. No competition. Believe a sedition. And if you don't talk about it, who will talk about it? So you say, stay out of the terrorist life. No, no, once you're in death is the only way out, dead, keep your head above the water so high, my cry no fly, energy never die for my people, energy, energy never die. Yes. Peace. Peace begins with us and human rights and rule of law. If basic freedoms are violated in response to terrorists, they have won. Peace is more profitable. Drop beats, not bombs. Violence has no religion. Leave alone Islam. Al-Shabaab cannot be about peace. We use words to convey our thoughts and feelings to one another. Certainly, the more articulate and wise we are in the use of words, the more effective we can be in our society. Islamic poetry is very important and its heritage passed generation to generation. This is the, an SMS to the human race. I wish it was 140 characters or less. I love you because of Allah. Your round cheeks are beautiful, but I'm attracted to you because of your Iman. First time I saw you, it was in class. I knew you were the one because you are the only one in hijab. You had no idea how much I tried to steal my beating heart. My dear friend, you are joy in all conceivable ways. My heart brightens when I think of your name. These poems and features examine Muslim faith and Islamic culture and address important events and occasions like Ramadan. Oh blessed month, oh blessed month, Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan Mubarak. 30 days going in without a doubt Opening the heart till the flowers sprout Focused on the locus of what this month's about Never down and out, only head down to prostrate and shout Within the soul, praise to the most high Within the soul, these days are most sublime To climb and climb to the lines of Quran so divine the deeds are going for free, they are going cheap. You read Quran in Ramadan, it's multiplied. You read Salah in Ramadan, multiplied. You do everything good in Ramadan, multiplied. But I want to tell you the sale is coming to an end. The sale is coming to an end. Please fill your basket full of as many blessings as you can have before the moon of Eid is sighted. Because when the moon of Eid is sighted, two things happen. One is, we are happy that Eid is there. But two is we will be sad that Ramadan is over. These poets explore a range of spiritual, literary and political concerns from centuries to the present date. 
To understand this journey of poetry, we meet Ibrahim and Omar who takes us through their journey as a spoken word poetry artist. It all started when I was a kid, way back. I guess I was in class three if I'm not wrong. My dad used to write them down for me and I get to perform on different occasions when, I'm still in, when I was in school. But it reached a point when I was around in classics, he got very busy trying to fend for us that he didn't have time to at least jot a few wordings for us. So I had to like take the challenge up onto me and uh, try it on myself. I remember the first piece I did was uh, on how a river flows with ears. <laughs> I can still recall of it. Yeah. Um, and then I also do remember when I got to perform for Raila when I was in class 7. It was amazing. <laughs> uh, my journey started when I was still in Madrasa. Uh, I was started, inspired us to Kaswida and he told us that you need to think about this religion, the future, and how to take this religion to the next generation through art and Islam poetry was born there. My journey also goes back uh, when I was really young. Back then we were searching for something to express myself. Tried out different arts, uh, we tried out uh, DJing, dancing, uh, drawing, painting and then we, we, I mean with some friends and sisters we used to practice at home. We found that the spoken word is powerful and you get to express yourself. You get to really say what's in your heart. So that's how it started. Islam in particular is a faith founded on the power of words. It is very significant that the prophetic mission began with just one word. Iqra. Read. Spoken word, generally, it can, it can be used as a... In as much as it's used as a way of communicating, but one can, can do it for fun. Let's say for leisure, that's the real way of uh, putting down things. So in Islam, it will be very important since you'll get to parse messages and educate people and of course entertain them in one way or another. In Islam, it's important because the, 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 the current situation, the way the media, media is promoting secularism, yeah? You know, they use the same the same art industry yeah, to destroy this um, yeah? We can use the same, the same art industry, per se, spoken words. The idea about Islam, the oneness of Allah, talk about uh, the beloved Prophet Wasallam. We can talk about these things uh, in public, uh, whereby it would be difficult to start giving a khutbah or start uh, giving a lecture or a, a class. So it's easy to just uh, go in a park and start performing a, a spoken word that is saying like Islam is one calling, a true calling and join us and things like that. So people will listen even if they don't take action but they'll get this idea. Poetry is a very important tool in the Islamic religion due to its equality of beauty to the Islamic religion. These words you, you, don't, you, you, you don't express different from, from speaking, so much different that the, the person who's listening might, might get out of the flow. You, it's easy to understand spoken word, you're speaking them, you're talking, it's like we are, we are talking but in, in a different way a little bit. Islamic art has always retained its natural quality and unique identity. As we sit and blame God for the problem of evil, aren't you the all-powerful? Please turn it back to peaceful. Despite the fact he gave us all that we needed to free these people. But are we even people? As we sit and blame God for the problem of evil. Aren't you the all-powerful? Please turn it back to peaceful. Despite the fact he gave us all that we needed to free these people. But are we even people?
with the increasing number of Muslims in Kenya and the world, there is need for people to learn their deen. The Muslims, they do few, few events yeah, for, for the Ummah. They, they, they figure about these young people. Oh, there is a lot of bad things happening to the Ummah, youth on the Ummah. But the, the platforms yeah, for, the, for the, those those ambassadors who are taking this message in, in relics and in art industry, it's limited. It's not uh, an industry per se. There's no a lot of understanding even in the general public about it. It's more like uh, very grassroots, one-to-one -one kind of, each one teach one kind of situation. Yeah. Like where we rehearse, there's a few youths there, they listen, but we don't get big audiences, so that's a challenge as well. Most people tend to associate terrorism with Islam. I find that when you do such pieces, you kind of educate them more and try and bring information to them. Different organizations have come up with different ways of passing dawah to the youth. But there are many Muslims who still struggle with the knowledge of their religion. Yeah, we start with ourselves because we are youth who are struggling with what's going on right now. For one, it helps you meditate upon uh, a lot of things that's happening and it gives you a channel to share what you're thinking and what you're experiencing. Like some of the things we put into spoken word, you cannot just talk to a brother and tell that this is what I'm thinking. But through the arts, you're able to Express, get a listening yeah. ear, yeah. I, re I realized when, uh, when I, myself at a personal level, when, when I started this poetry, I was able to reach you, yeah? Even in the, in, the, in the heart of the ghettos, where it's hard to talk to them, yeah? Because they listen to the vibration, yeah? And they relate to the vibration and they, they feel like he's telling us the truth. And after that, uh, for sometimes you see the change in the place because I see them now coming to Solar. Most of them, who I know them, you know, at a personal level, I've seen changes. Among the entertainments which may comfort the soul and refresh the ear is singing or listening to Nasheeds. But today, there is a very big problem. And I have asked religious non-Muslims, I'm talking of Christians and Jews and Hindus, etc. Naming top pop stars from the music industry. Would you allow your children to listen to this person? Never. Would you allow them this? Never. Would you allow them that? Never. Why? It's dirty, it's immoral, it's filthy, it's degrading, and it's unacceptable, not in my home. But you're a Christian, I know, not allowed. But you're a Jew, not allowed in my home. But you're a Hindu, never, not with my children. And then there is rap. It's like we're speaking, yeah? It's the word that we're talking in, yeah? But rap, the, 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 the flow is different, people are, it's, it's talking but it's hard, it's, it's hard I would talking. Say, I would say it's, uh, the, dif the main difference is that uh, spoken, it focuses on the words, what you're saying is important. Yeah. Whereas rap is a lot about emotion and the instrumental, the rhythm, it's about the rhythm. In as much as uh, nowadays people tend to put beats into poetry and, and uh, spoken word poetry, that's not how it is or how it used to be or how it should be, yeah? Because you'll find, uh, that's why we need to find the distinction between the difference between poetry, spoken word poetry and rap. And rap, they don't have a particular way of uh, speaking their words, if I may use such. In as much as they, they have the lyrical value of it and uh, the powerful voices and, and the urge and all that, they think that that's what will sell for them. And unlike uh, poetry, you need to be very careful in the words you're picking. Words are the means by which we can study our past and leave a legacy for the future. We all know poetry was uh, originally, it was tradition. That's how uh, the Asian people used to they use poetry to pass information, or if you want to teach your daughter how to cook, to cook you'll put it in a lyrical way or in a... They'll have uh, the rhyming ways for them to learn it easier and it will be easier for them to memorize. And like nowadays, it's how you put down your words. It doesn't matter if you rhyme or you don't, if it has the lyrical value of it or it, or it doesn't. It's the message in it, how powerful it is, how, do you, how you deliver it. First of all, we don't try to tell them they're wrong. 
We try to give them something that entices them, something they, they relate to. So we will, uh, like he does swing that sounds like dancehall, so they relate to that sound. But uh, the flow of it, but now the content is very much Islamic and... And every, every, everyone when they listen to that content, they'll have different thought about it. Yeah? You'll yeah. change. Myself, I've seen, I've seen a person changing from, from what I was, I was flowing. Yeah? I was employed uh, some time back. Yeah? I, and that, that colleague of mine became a Muslim. They can be soothing to those in grief. They can offer hope to those in despair. Indeed, well-chosen words have power. In the information jihad, the most powerful weapons are not guns, but wise words and good actions. The most common way that I go about uh, spoken word poetry is I get to pass not only my message to the youth, but it also helps me in putting down my feelings, what I feel generally about the society, things that affect the society at large, families and all that. So I get to sit down and see how the society is affected by different things, then I narrow down to it. And that's how I influence the society at large. Those of us who are gifted communicators, like our teachers, broadcasters, writers, Poets and artists must transmit the message of Islam in a beautiful, powerful and effective manner. My biggest dream is to, to make da'wah through this, uh, this art, yeah? And to make sure that person in the four corners of the world, yeah? He knows that when he become a Muslim, he'll be my brother, my sister. Yeah, because love, Islam is a one calling, yeah. yeah. Where I get to perform at uh, Kenya National Theatre, I don't see any Muslim. I, I think I'm the only Muslim, let alone Muslim lady, that I get to perform here. So it's kind of like a privilege to me to spread that we're not suppressed. We can also go out and uh, do constructive things like poetry, which is very powerful to the community. The human being is the crown of creation, endowed with intellect. He is usually called a speaking animal as he can speak his mind and thoughts through his tongue. Every word spoken or written consciously or unconsciously has a tremendous impact. What we'll tell them first uh, is to to, to hold fast their prayers, yeah? What you pray is what you get in the long run. Yeah? Like, I'm telling them I started this journey at a tender age in Madrasa, yeah? And I'm still on the road and I've seen so many things that, that I've achieved that I prayed long time ago. So don't, 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 don't be afraid, yeah, of what you are doing. Just keep, give it to Allah and be, be on the right course. In order to create a peaceful, loving society. Children need to be taught interactive skills coupled with a temperate use of words. For Horizon Reports, I am Aisha Khan. I point this gun. I point this gun. I shall shot bodies mirroring the population I've endured for centuries. I am the soul of the past yet indented to the future. So I have to make sure that everyone pays for the destruction of my roots the destruction of my identity.